Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm going to do a charcoal drawing of a tree on a hill with a winding path around it. Let's go. Normally when I do these landscapes I don't need a very elaborate sketch but here the composition is a little bit more complex. So first I'm going to position this tree and this small hill, whatever it is. And I'm going to sketch out the shape of the tree so that I can give myself a rough idea about what it's going to look like, how big it's going to be, and uh, which part of this paper it's going to take up. There's going to be uh, some trees in the background as well. And maybe a sw small winding path around this around this little hill. So after that I'm going to shade the background a little bit. This is where the sky will be so I'm working around the trees now even though the trees will be darker than the background but I'm going to shade the background first here with a piece of willow charcoal and then I'm going to blend that with a soft brush. As for my materials, I'm working on a smaller smaller size Fabriano sketching paper and I'm working with Kohino charcoal pencils, some willow charcoal and some compressed charcoal. So basically charcoal and Fabriano sketching paper. I'm also going to use some erasers so now I'm dabbing a bit with my kneaded eraser to see if I can create some suggestions of clouds, some shapes of clouds here in the background on the, on the left. Naturally, I needed to shade the background first so that these clouds would stand out. I don't really need too much contrast, honestly. Just... Uh, just a little bit of value in the background so that these clouds to the left would stand out. But I'm not going to make them very detailed. Just a small shape of a cloud here. And uh, I worked on the edges uh, with a precision eraser. I used that Tumbo Mono Zero eraser, by the way, to work around the edges of the cloud. So here on the left we're going to have some trees in the background but I'm going to try to make these a lot less detailed so these are just going to be some suggestions of trees and canopies in the back there's going to be another tree here in the midground just behind this main tall tree in the foreground so as I move closer to the foreground, things are going to be getting more and more detailed, obviously. The stuff in the background is going to be just uh, suggestions of shapes. And I can do this mostly with a piece of willow charcoal. Because willow charcoal is easy to manipulate, it's kind of easy to move it, move it around and control the amount of value. So you can create some blurry out of focus effects if you want maybe some suggestions of areas of darker and lighter value where you don't really have to commit to specific shapes or anything like that. But for the foreground here, for this tree, I'm going to have to put in a little bit more work because I'm, ha I'm going to have to define more details here and I'm going to have to try to make it look a bit more realistic as well as detailed. So now I'm drawing some branches here and you can see that I'm kind of creating interrupted shapes, interrupted lines. That's because some parts of those boughs and branches will be obscured by the canopy. They will be hidden behind the foliage. I want a nice thick canopy of leaves. So not all of the branches will be visible, just some of them. So I gave myself a rough idea about the structure and the shape of the tree. And now I'm going to work around and uh, I'm going to work with those branches, that system of branches that I've laid down. And uh, I'm going to do a lot of work using a charcoal pencil as well as a piece of willow charcoal. 
So I, I like to use both of these because uh, the willow charcoal allows me to shade larger areas quickly and establish areas of lighter and darker value very quickly. So basically it allows me to establish some larger shapes and larger relationships without much effort. Whereas the charcoal pencil allows me to create some areas of even darker value and it allows me to define some smaller details and create some finer interesting textures. So you can see that I use the willow charcoal to define that overall shape of the canopy and kind of split it into segments and these segments or clusters of leaves form around the larger branches and boughs where you can see we have some larger uh, areas of shadow in the middle where there is less light coming through and some, some of these lighter bits, some of these lighter shapes are those uh, larger clusters of leaves which are on the surface which are kind of popping out and are closer to the light source so uh, I could just sort of leave it like this and uh, go over it uh, with uh, with a brush and I could do that if I were drawing a tree which is a little bit further away in the distance but because it's uh, closer to the foreground I think I'm gonna have to put in a little bit more work on the texture and the detail now when I see when I use that word texture I'm talking about these small shapes and lines and dots that appear when I drag my pencil over the paper. Whenever the pencil interacts with the tooth of the paper there's going to be some texture. Now you can control the amount of texture by using your blending tools. You can smooth things out and you can, or you can leave the texture looking rough depending on what you're trying to achieve. Obviously different types of drawing tools create different kinds of marks and different kinds of textures so willow charcoal and vine charcoal they blend more smoothly and they're a little bit lighter they create less texture but charcoal pencils which are essentially compressed charcoal in a wood casing they create more texture and you can see that this texture that I'm creating by dragging my pencil kinda look like, looks like leaves a bunch of leaves as seen from a distance and I'm just going to keep doing that, creating this random texture. And it is this texture that creates that illusion of detail. Because, you see, uh, there's always an easier way and a more difficult way to do things. If I try to draw every single leaf, I would have to use a combination of both my pencil and an eraser, and it would be a very, very a time-consuming and very difficult process. This is what artists do when they want to create photorealistic drawings. This is not exactly what I'm going for. I want to create something that looks pretty detailed, but I want to use these techniques to trick the eye of the viewer into thinking that they're looking at something very detailed. So I use these textures to create an illusion of detail. And it is this rough texture uh, of the charcoal pencil that will create the illusion like you're looking at a lot of foliage. Now of course I can always knock that back a little bit and soften it with my brushes as I'm doing now and I can always go back in and make some areas a bit lighter or darker for example I can go in with my erasers and lift up a little bit of value in some parts of the canopy or I can go back in with a charcoal pencil and create some smaller darker shadow areas in between the these clusters of leaves to break up these larger uh, shapes larger groups of foliage into smaller shapes so that the whole canopy appears more detailed and more interesting so if i i haven't really used a uh, tumbo mono zero eraser i mostly use the kohinoor pencil eraser and they're more or less the same in terms of what they do. Uh, maybe the Mono Zero can erase slightly smaller marks, but it's really not that much of a difference. It's the same thing with kneaded erasers. I've used Kohinoor kneaded eraser or Fabic style kneaded eraser. It's mostly the way you use them. Um, so here, if you look at the... By the way, I'm moving on to this other tree behind this one. This one is going to be a little bit lighter overall but a little bit darker 
at the bottom of the canopy obviously because light source is coming from above so uh, the bottom part of the canopy is going to be a, a little bit darker now if we go back and look at the uh, shadows on this main tree here uh, you can see that there is more shadow on the bottom part of the canopy as well but you can also see that the branches just under the canopy uh, and the top part of the tree trunk uh, just under the canopy is much darker it's almost black that's because the canopy is casting a shadow onto the onto those branches whereas uh, the main part of the tree trunk is lighter because it's obviously catching more light from everywhere around and from uh, the light source now in terms of the light source uh, like i said it's coming from above as is usually the case with most um, with most landscapes however in this case also the light source is coming more from the right than the left which means that the left side is going to be my shadow side you can see that on the canopy where the lower left part of the canopy of the tree is a bit darker and I'm trying to make it look like this is the case with other canopies as well and also you can see that on the tree trunk as well because uh, the tree trunk is also darker on the left side. The right side is catching a bit more light from that light source. The same is going to be the case uh, with this uh, piece of land, this small hill and that the tree is growing on. So the left side of that small slope is going to be much darker. It's going to be in the shadow. And I'm going to try to make this look like a slightly rough terrain on one side uh, where maybe there are some I don't know, maybe some rocks, maybe a slightly more uh, rough terrain, uh, whereas on the other side we're going to have a little bit of grass and maybe like a small slope and then and then we're going to have this a winding path kind of uh, going around the around that small hill and winding down into the into the forest to the left. So it's like a small scene and like I said uh, when it comes to the composition with some of the other uh, landscapes I often don't have to do anything other than decide where the for example the line of the horizon will be or the line of the water will be sometimes uh, sketching uh, this initial phase uh, with landscapes is usually just drawing a few lines but here the composition was a little bit more complex so I needed, needed to give myself an idea where all of the elements would be but after that once you get things going it's easier because you can just uh, do the stuff that you normally do uh, but of course when it comes to drawing trees uh, these textures they are nice looking and they're, uh, they can appear realistic but the more important thing always is capturing the larger volume of objects which is why you need to pay attention to the larger relationships between areas of lighter and darker value and which is why you need to be aware of your light source you always need to stay away stay aware rather you need to stay aware of uh, the direction of the light the the light source because as long as, you st as long as you stay consistent with that, your scene will make a lot more sense to the viewer. Uh, anyway, I wasn't uh, super happy with that uh, row of trees in the background, so I kind of kept reworking it. And I also decided to add some more trees here on the right side as well, because... Um, because I felt like I needed a bit more contrast with this hill and I made uh, the ground and the grass around the path a little bit darker so that the path would stand out. Uh, so uh, I also did a little bit of erasing on the path itself because like I said I really want that path to stand out and I'm trying to create some more contrast uh, with the with the area around the path and the grass, grass around the path. And I'm also adding some random details with a pencil eraser trying to make the terrain appear a little more interesting. 
Here and there I'm softening the texture a little bit and sometimes I'm adding a bit more texture and some darker details where I feel like I need them. I reworked the trees on the left a bit. I added a bit more shadow at the bottom of these canopies so that uh, um, so that the tree trunks are a little bit less discernible and I added some more value above the right side of this hill and I added some more canopies on the right as well because I want this part of the scene to stand out in contrast against the background which is why I had to make this part of the background a little bit darker as well now uh, the bottom part appears a little bit too dark maybe so uh, maybe I'm just gonna dab on it with a brush a little bit try to uh, make it a bit more even and maybe take away a bit of the value but um, it's uh, it's mostly coming along nicely. If you're wondering what the scissors are doing over there on the right, that's because when I use that Tombow Mono Zero eraser, the tip gets dirty, so occasionally I just cut it off and I, uh, I get a nice clean edge to work with uh, when I need to erase smaller, finer details. So I think that the I think that this hill and the tree in the middle is starting to stand out nicely against the background which is kind of what I wanted to achieve because all of these textures and details uh, are not as important as allowing the viewer to discern these larger more important shape immediately when they look at the scene. Uh, by the way, if you like this drawing and if you like my videos I would like to remind you to subscribe to my channel to give me a like and comment and if you want to see longer videos, uh, you should definitely check out my Patreon where you'll find some real-time footage, full-length videos and more narration and just more content overall. So I'm just putting down some finishing touches on this background area here and filling in these corners which were covered uh, with the tape and uh, refining the shape uh, of the train as it were. Just dabbing a little bit here and there with a brush, trying to control the amount of value to see if everything looks balanced and if everything makes sense in terms of the light source. So I put my signature in the lower left corner and now I'm just putting down some finishing touches, dragging my eraser here and there to make some parts of the scene a bit lighter <clears throat> but it's uh, almost done as you can see so I hope you enjoyed this video of a tree on a hill and uh, thank you for watching I'm gonna see you in the next one bye for now